president of these United States has called my next guest everything from not a very good reporter to a great reporter sometimes. Please welcome Katie Turr. Now, for the people out there, the few who may not know, uh, you're an anchor on MSNBC from 2 to 3. Yes. The name of the show is? Live on MSNBC with There Kate it is. <laughs> there it is. Keep it simple. Exactly. I watch it every day because that's the period of time when I'm getting ready to come down here to rehearse. And I give you tips. You absolutely do. I'm shaking Fodder. like that while I'm here. I got you on in the background. The Alabama Senate race uh, uh, was today. And again, we, we don't know what happened yet because it's too early. We're pre-taping this interview right now. Um, you followed Trump. For 500 days, something like that. Yeah, 510. 510 days, <laughs> and he had his own share of um, you know sexual harassment, and sexual abuse scandals. Uh, you talked to the voters uh, who supported Donald Trump after the Access Hollywood tape came out, who still supported him. Yeah. Why do you think that these kind of accusations in the past would have destroyed a candidate, haven't destroyed Donald Trump, and and may not have destroyed uh, Roy Moore? It Why don't is, voters care? It is tribalism at its worst. It's people just deciding, I like this person, I want him in office, I don't care what he did, I'm going to find any excuse I can to, to excuse his behavior. I, I was talking to a lady um, at, outside of a rally uh, in Florida, and this nice older woman, she was wearing a flowery dress, grandmother, and a one lone protester was playing the Access Hollywood tape on repeat, you know, grab him by the, grab him by the, grab him by the. Yeah. And I walked up to her and I said, you know, what do you think of this? And she said, oh, well, who hasn't said that. And I said, gosh, you know, I, I haven't said that. <laughs> and, she, and she got very condescending. Oh, well, aren't you so, so special? And I said, well, have you said it? And she looked at me like I had, you know, asked her if she'd killed a puppy. No, of course I haven't said it. And then she walked through. But it, it just it underscores that people were willing to give him any excuse because they just liked him. They were entertained by him. They didn't like the system. They thought he was going to be a champion of their values, whatever it was. Sure. And that's why Roy Moore is, is enjoying some of the same support in Alabama, not, you know, uh, statewide, but, but a lot of it. Well, the old saw, the, the aphorism now made famous, uh, you know, by the 1992 campaign is that it's the economy stupid. Are these people all voting on economic interests, essentially, and the Democrats are dumb to run on things like these character issues because it doesn't work for them? That's what Steve Bannon says. That's his whole idea. Steve is... and I are very close. So, Steve and I, are so very... <laughs> I heard. Yeah. Um, he said, so, so long as the Democrats are, are running on um, identity politics, yeah. uh, we're going to win because we're talking about the economy. And that did resonate with a lot of Donald Trump's voters, especially in the upper Midwest where he broke down that blue wall. So there is an aspect of that, absolutely. But it was also some voter apathy during 2016. It was a dislike for Hillary Clinton and there were people who just didn't like the way the country was going, as in the way the country looked, as in who the president was as in, in 2008 to 2016. Uh -huh. There was, was there some... anything about him that they didn't like particularly? Draw your own conclusion. Mm -hmm. um, what color crayon would I use to draw that conclusion? <laughs> no, I mean... <laughs> don't, don't paint with a broad brush, but, but there was definitely a, a lot of that. Well, again, 510 days on the road with Donald Trump. And now you've got a book of that experience. It's called Unbelievable. <laughs> My Front Row Seat. My Front Row Seat to the Craziest Campaign in American History. It's an understatement. It is. So what is it like to be in the front row or even the back row? Because the press was often in the back row at these rallies, and he would use uh, you guys... Um, as props. As, as props. You yeah. were the boogeyman at the back of the room. We were actually in the center of the room. I mean, okay. We would go to these arenas, and there would be thousands of people around us up in the stands, and we would be dead center in the room, almost like a Roman Colosseum. And Donald Trump, at one point, he was talking about Vladimir Putin, how much he admired him, and, and he, had been, he had been asked about Vladimir Putin killing journalists, and he just waved it away and said, you know, I would never kill journalists. Well, 
Maybe, I'm not sure, but I really hate them. And we're, meanwhile, in the center of this arena with 5,000 people around us, and they all turn on us and boo and laugh, laugh at the idea of us getting murdered. So it was surreal, it was bizarre, it was scary, it was disheartening, and it was also just completely thrilling because we, nobody in this country or even the world had seen anything quite like this. And I got to see it every single day up close for, for the good, bad, and the ugly. Now, you, you've said that everybody covering Trump needs to tone the rhymes with the duck down. <laughs> What do you mean by that? Why do people I need think to calm that down I, I just him? I think that if you take everything at a, you know, if you're screaming about everything, if everything is the end of the world, and a lot of it is very, very serious, I'm not trying to diminish um, what's going on out there with the Russia investigation, with the, the norms he's shattering, uh, with the allegations of sexual misconduct. Possible nuclear war with North Korea. Possible nuclear war with North Korea, thanks for reminding me. Um, <laughs> I think those are very serious things, but we need to pick and choose what we get breathless about. Because if we get breathless about everything, even just a ridiculous tweet, mm -hmm. then people aren't going to take you seriously. And you give fodder to this idea that the media is all out to get Donald Trump, and we're looking for any reason to, to criticize him. I think that's a bad idea. I don't think it's healthy. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I say tone the F down. I don't mean it when we're talking about uh, nuclear war with North Korea, not. because so, I think that's extraordinarily serious and terrifying. So you're not always looking for a way to criticize President Trump? No, we're not. So say something nice about him. <laughs> His ties are very long. I'm sorry, they didn't hear you. What is it? His ties are very long. Yes, he is well endowed in that area. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Unbelievable. The book is out now. You can catch Katie Turr on MSNBC Live. Uh, Katie Turr, everybody. We'll be right back. Thanks for watching my YouTube video. Now it's your turn to thank me. Click subscribe, and at the end of the next video, I'll thank you again.